Hey guys, um, last time we talked, we kind of focused on the, the testicle, its structure, the pathway that sperm takes as it leaves the testicle. Now I'm going to talk about what happens inside one of these seminiferous tubules in blue. So imagine I'm going to draw the seminiferous tubule over here. We're going to zoom in and we're going to like cut it lengthwise so we can see what's inside um, this tube. Okay. So one thing you'll notice is on the outer wall of the tube is composed of a special cell that I've drawn in red called myoid cells. These are uh, smooth muscle cells. They're about three to four layers, cell layers thick. And what they do is they contract and they produce a slow movement of current that propels the sperm throughout the seminiferous tubule. Then um, Another cell that I wanted to draw are um, in orange, right? So these are called spermatogenic cells, and these are ultimately the cells that divide to produce sperm. And this is kind of how this works, right? These guys, they're located near the myoid cells on the outside of the tube, and they're constantly dividing through mitosis. They're gonna produce two daughter cells. One of these daughter cells is just gonna hang out near the outside of the tube to continue to divide, but the other one is gonna undergo another type of cell division called meiosis. Now, if you remember, meiosis is all about the production of gametes, so eggs and sperm. In, this, in a nutshell, this is how it works. So, meiosis produces sperm and eggs, which have half the number of chromosomes relative to every other cell in our body. So, most of the cells in our body have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. Of each pair, one chromosome came from mom, one chromosome um, came from dad. Okay. Now, meiosis is going to produce sperm or eggs that contain only 23 chromosomes. It's For each pair, it's only going to contain one member of each pair, so 23 chromosomes. Now, it does this so that when the sperm that contains 23 chromosomes fertilizes the egg, which contains another 23, those chromosomes add up to make 46. Right? If sperm contained 46 and so did eggs, the embryo would contain 92, which would be a huge problem, right? So um, it's all about, it solves a numbers game. It solves a math problem, right? So meiosis exists in two different um, steps. You have meiosis one, that's when this one daughter cell divides into two, and then meiosis two, that's when this um, these two daughter cells divide into, um, to produce four more. Now, ultimately, these four cells that are produced by meiosis II, those are young sperm, which are eventually released into the lumen or the inside of that tube, and they're gonna start learning how to develop. They're gonna flow through that um, intricate pathway of tubes towards the tail of the epididymis, and they, along their way, they're gonna learn how to, um, how to swim, all right? The last cell that I'm gonna draw here are in blue. These guys are called sustentocytes, right? And what these guys do is they serve as kind of placeholders. They make sure that this process of meiosis occurs in the right kind of place, in the right direction. They're also gonna control this process of meiosis. So they're gonna control when it happens and how it happens, right? So um, they really just control this whole process of spermatogenesis inside of the seminiferous tubules. Now, um, meiosis and spermatogenesis doesn't occur until puberty, and so this process really doesn't occur until the early teens in um, males, and then after that occurs, then it's going to happen quite frequently again. You know, the average male produces 400 million sperm every, every day. Okay. Now, let's kind of zoom in on one of these sperm and see what kind of each sperm looks like if we were to zoom in. All right, so the sperm has three different parts. First is called the head or the um, nucleus of the sperm. This is where the DNA are housed, which is really the most important part of the sperm. That's the whole reason they exist, is to fertilize um, the female egg with, and um, kind of unite or, and carry DNA, right, for the, for the embryo. The next part is the midpiece of the sperm. This is really packed with mitochondria. It's packed with mitochondria because mitochondria obviously make ATP and the sperm's gonna need a lot of ATP or energy in order to swim, okay? He's got an actually a really long um, distance to, uh, to swim. The average uh, the sperm swims about seven inches in an hour. Okay, and so if you were to consider the path that it needs to go um, to fertilize the female egg, that's the equivalent of someone swimming like five miles um, across a lake or something like that. So the sperm um, are going to need to be able to swim, and they do this with a flagella. The flagella um, extends out from the midpiece, and this is what powers the swimming motion. Last thing I wanted to mention is on top of the head, it's actually encased with a protective uh, coating called the acrosome. The acrosome is full of digestive enzymes. I've drawn this in red, 
which will help to digest the um, female um, covering of the egg. Okay. Now, um, sperm don't always look like this. Sometimes you'll have problems with the formation of sperm. Often heat is a contributor to this. So if the testicle is too hot, then sperm um, not only are not produced in as high, so sperm counts go down, but also the sperm, they don't have the shape this ideal form they might have like a deformed shape and they can't swim as much other exposure to, to toxins like um, BPA plastics right has been shown to decrease sperm counts but also decrease the health of the sperm they might have this weird you got a deformed tail or deformed head and obviously that's going to have some huge um, negative impacts on their ability to fertilize right so toxins can um, impact sperm health also heat is another big one right that's about it. Thanks.